Hello everyone and welcome back. This is a continuation of the Introduction to Memory Forensics video. If you haven't yet watched that video, I would recommend you do so prior to watching this one. I'll leave a link in the description. This time, we're going to again be using volatility to analyze a Windows memory image that contains malware. We'll start by using some of the more common plugins that were covered in the previous video, including PSTree, PSList, and PSScan. As we comb through that data, we'll look for any processes that stand out as being odd or potentially malicious. Then we'll move on to a more advanced plugin called Malfind. As the name implies, Malfind helps us locate malicious code within our memory image, including hidden or injected code or injected DLLs. Next, we'll look at a similar plugin called Holofind, which actually won the 2016 Volatility Plugin Contest. Holofind is designed to automate detection of various process hollowing techniques that you might encounter. Now, don't worry if you don't know what process injection or process hollowing is. We will briefly cover that prior to running the plugins. Lastly, we'll wrap it up by running proc dump to dump a couple of the identified malicious processes. We'll then hash them and submit those hashes to VirusTotal to verify our findings. Now for this particular video, I'm going to be using a memory sample from a Windows XP machine that's been infected with Stuxnet. Please note that this video is not going to go into a technical explanation of how Stuxnet works or why it was a game changer or any of that. That horse is dead and I assure you it's been sufficiently beaten. Rather, I'm using this particular memory image because it's a great way to illustrate the basic memory analysis techniques that I'm attempting to cover in this video. I also want to show you the memory samples page from the Volatility Foundation. I'll include a link to this in the video's description as well. This page contains a list of publicly available memory samples that contain malware such as Black Energy, Core Flood, Zeus, and others. Again, this is an excellent resource whether you're using Volatility, Recall, Redline, or any other memory analysis tool, and this will be great practice for you. Speaking of those other tools, I do plan to create some future videos that cover Recall and Redline. For now though, let's go ahead and switch over to our Linux Analysis VM and fire up Volatility and start analyzing our memory image. Okay, so here we are in our Linux Analysis VM. The first thing that we're going to need to do is run the Volatility Image Info plugin so that we can get some suggestions as to the correct profile to use so that Volatility can parse this memory image. Now, if we don't get this right, we're going to get unexpected results or no results at all. So let's run vol.py-f to specify stuxnet.vmem, which is the capture we're working with. You can tell from the file extension that this likely came from a VMware virtual machine. And I'll simply run image info to invoke that plugin. Now this can take quite a while to run on a large memory image, but in our case, this is only a 512 meg memory image, so it doesn't take long at all. And it comes back with two suggested profiles for Windows XP Service Pack 2 and Windows XP Service Pack 3. I happen to know that this was taken from an SP2 machine, so I'm going to grab that profile and I'm going to specify dash dash profile equals and then paste that in. And at this point, we're actually ready to run our first plugin besides image info, which is going to be PS tree. So I really like this plugin a lot. It's very basic, but it shows a nice text-based hierarchical view of the processes that were running on the system at the time the memory acquisition occurred. Across the top, of course, you've got name, the PID and the parent PID, which is going to be very important for what we're analyzing here. And then just scrolling down through here, you'll see some common things like system and the client server runtime subsystem, services, VMware tools, because this was likely running on a VM. Looks like someone launched cmd.exe and then from there ran ipconfig.exe. Looks like we see svchost.exe several times. Of course, this is a very ubiquitous process on a Windows box. We expect to see multiple processes for SVC host. There are some things that we do need to know. SVC host should live only in Windows System 32, and it should have a parent of services.exe. Of course, it should also have a dash K parameter with certain flags that are well known that we can talk about in another video. But uh, suffice it to say, this so far looks normal, and the PPID is 668, which is services.exe, so that jives. So at a cursory glance, SVC host looks okay. Looks like we've got another VMware tools related upgrade helper. 
And it looks like here is LSAS. This is one of the most important processes on a Windows box. That's the local security authority subsystem service. And of course that handles all the authentication and password related functions on the box. If this becomes unstable or crashes, the entire box is useless. It'll need to be rebooted and it's game over. So LSAS.exe again, very important. And if we scroll on down, here is something very strange. Here's a second LSAS.exe. That should never happen. There should be one LSAS.exe and one only. And in fact, here's a third LSAS.exe. So clearly, if I was analyzing this memory image and didn't know anything about it, I could immediately, with probable, probable certainty, say that this machine is compromised. Something is not right here. So one thing we do know is that LSAS.exe on a Windows XP or older system should have a parent of winlogon.exe. By the way, on Windows Vista and later, the parent will be winInit.exe. So let's look here at the first LSAS, which has a parent of 668, which is services.exe, as does the second LSAS.exe. The third, however, has a parent of 624, which is winlogon.exe, which is correct. So this may be our legit LSAS.exe. And the other two are very likely imposters. So we need to take note of PID 1928 and 868. So in an analysis, I would definitely jot those two down and say something is fishy about those. Something is not right. So let's repeat the PS tree command and let's go ahead and use egrep try to narrow down the output uh, just so we can see it a little bit better. And egrep will allow us, of course, to use a regular expression. That's the same thing as grep dash capital E. So we'll use LSAS for the process we're interested in or when log on, which of course is the correct parent or services, which of course is the incorrect parent. And now we get a nice concise view of what we were looking at. We see, we see when log on .exe, we see that services.exe has a parent of when log on we see two LSAS processes, 1928 and 868, that live under services.exe, which is not right. And then we see our probably legit LSAS.exe, PID 680, which lives under winlogon.exe, as it should on a Windows XP system. So that's just a nice, concise view. Next, let's go ahead and run PS list. So this is very similar. It doesn't give us the hierarchical view, the tree view. But we do see the standard processes that we saw with PS tree. Now, one thing to note is that PS list is the equivalent of running Windows Task Manager or Task List on a live computer. It shows us the processes that are currently running at the time we run it. So this follows something called a doubly linked list, whereby each process points to the entry before it in the entry after it within the list, effectively creating this chain of processes that refer to one another. So what happens is malware, especially rootkits, can unlink themselves from this chain, if you will, and hide. But we've got another plugin called PS Scan. And instead of trusting this doubly linked list, PS Scan actually scours the memory image for something called an e-process block. E process blocks are the memory structures associated with Windows processes. So when you think of e process blocks, again, think of memory associated with a Windows process. So PS scan looks for those blocks within memory instead of trusting the doubly linked list. Now, in this particular case, on this particular memory image, the results are the same. I've already diffed them. But keep in mind that you'll want to run PS scan because PS scan can find those hidden and unlinked processes. I wanted you to be very clear on the difference between those two. Again, in our case, for our analysis, it's not going to come into play, but do keep in mind that anytime you've got a list and a scan, the list is generally the higher level, higher view uh, pro uh, plugin, and scan is generally the more in-depth plugin. So next we're going to run malfind. Now I could just run malfind with no options. And we'll get back not only the two identified malicious processes, so spoiler alert there, but we'll also get back some other processes that are likely also compromised. Because I want to keep the video manageable and relatively short, we won't get into that in this video. Let's focus on PID 1928 and 868. 
So I'll go ahead and specify 1928 and 868 and pipe that through more. When we do, you'll see first off that it shows us protection is page execute read write. This means that we've got an area of memory marked as executable, but there is no mapped file on disk for that particular section of memory. That is highly suspect. That is not normal. We've got executable code that lives in memory only that does not have a mapped file on disk that is associated with. So clearly something is not right here. You'll notice we also get some assembly output. If you know assembly, you can see in some cases that this doesn't really do much of anything. But again, it does output some of the assembly. And this just off the gate doesn't look right. Something is not right about this, especially because we're seeing page execute read write. You'll even see a reference here to kernel 32.dll, some additional assembly. So clearly Malfind has detected that these processes have issues. Now let's go back to that PS tree output and let's look at the probably legit LSAS.exe, which was 680 for the PID. And just for the heck of it, let's tell Malfind to look at PID 680. And notice that we get back nothing. That is because Malfind found nothing evil about PID 680, which fits what we're thinking. This is likely the legit LSAS.exe. So that's just one interesting thing that we can glean from that. Next, let's run HollowFind. Now, HollowFind, as I mentioned, won the 2016 Volatility Plugin Contest. And it's very cool because it helps automate the detection of process hollowing. If you're not familiar, Process hollowing will take a legitimate process, think about the legit LSAS.exe, it will duplicate it in a suspended state, it will replace the executable memory within that process with malicious code, and then resume the process. This effectively hollows out the executable code within a legit process, but it maintains the name, the path, and other characteristics, effectively making the imposter process appear as if it were legitimate. Does that sound familiar? Because that is very likely what has happened with these two LSAS processes. So let's see if we're right. Let's run hollow find with no other options and see what kind of output we get back. We'll pipe it through more so we can scroll here. And you'll see it identified on its own 1928 for the PID and of course down below we'll actually see 868 but let's look here at what's happened we see something called vad and peb comparison so you may ask yourself what is vad and peb all right so vad is virtual address descriptor and peb is process environment block i'm sure that helps a lot right so the peb lives in process memory and it's related to the eProcess blocks that we talked about earlier, which again is the memory structure associated with the Windows process. The VAD, however, unlike the PEB, lives in kernel memory, and it also contains information relating to the address space associated with the given process. What HollowFind does is it compares the VAD and the PEB, and it looks for discrepancies. If there's a discrepancy, that may indicate process hollowing has occurred. So if you look here, you'll notice something's missing. The process path is blank under the VAD, but present under the PEB. Something is not right. Once again, we've got another plugin showing page execute read write, just like Malfind did. So what we've got is we've got an executable area of memory that has no associated mapped file on disk. So something is evil here. And again, it's comparing and looking for discrepancies between the two. And you'll even see hollow type invalid exe memory protection page execute read write, and process path discrepancy, because the process path is, of course, blank here. And if we scroll on down, there's PID 868. And comparing the VAD and the PEB, same thing. No process path listed here. So very cool stuff. So again, we have been able to use these plugins so far to narrow down two different processes, 1928 and 868, and we have a pretty good idea that these things are evil. What we're going to do now is use something called proc dump to actually dump this process, this actual executable, out of memory and onto the disk so that we can perform further analysis. Now, I could run proc dump by itself, specifying a dump directory, 
and dump all processes out of memory, but I don't want to do that. I want to focus on PID 1928 and 868, and I'll specify the dump directory, which is the current directory. When we do that, you'll notice two files have appeared on the desktop, which look like executables, but let's run file against them. And in fact, they are PE32 executables. So now let's go ahead and run SHA-256 sum against both of these guys and get a SHA-256 hash for them. Our last step is we're going to go back to the Mac OS side, pull up virus total, and then paste in these hashes and see if they are known to virus total so that we can determine whether or not our analysis has been correct. So let's go ahead and end this and go back over to the Mac OS side and take a look at virus total next. Okay, as this video comes to an end, we are back in Mac OS. I've opened up a browser and gone to virustotal.com and on the screen are the two SHA-256 hashes that we computed for those two processes that we dumped from memory. That would be PID 1928 and 868 respectively. Let's go ahead and grab the first SHA-256 hash, go to search and see what kind of results we can get. You see immediately it came back with a high detection ratio and you can see that this is known by numerous vendors, uh, some of which call it Dooku, which of course is a piece of malware closely related to Stuxnet. And in fact, some vendors actually know it as Stuxnet, which of course it is. So clearly PID 1928 is evil. Let's take a look at the other hash. Let's go ahead and grab this guy and see if we see the same thing. Once again, a high detection ratio. It's being listed as Dooku, and again, also being listed as Stuxnet. So clearly, PID 868 is also evil and not legit. Okay, so that brings this video to an end. I hope this has been an informative follow-up to the Introduction to Memory Forensics video. I plan to continue to expand this series as I have the Introduction to Windows Forensics series, so continue to check back for more. I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and like and share as many of these videos as you can. The entire intent here is to give back to the information security community, so hopefully these videos are able to do just that. You can also contact me on Twitter at DavisRichardG if you have any suggestions. I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this. Again, I hope it was informative for you, and I'll see you in the next video.